we can do one thing and we can fix this country. One thing. Oh, what is it? I, I believe... We should cut the transmission right here. <laughs> <laughs> they want to shut me up. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but again, there's no leadership, and it would be... There would, it would take so much trust from your fellow citizen to do it. You'd have to trust that everybody was on board. Oh, I, I know where you're going to say. And, I mentioned this before. And the, you know, it would be a snowball effect. You would just need to get it off the ground, and then it would just, it would, they would not be able to stop it. There aren't enough IRS agents in the world. There aren't enough bullets in the world to stop this. But you have to get that first million people in. This is what Occupy Wall Street should have been. We should do a debt strike. Citizen debt strike. Americans don't know, people around the globe don't know what credit is, really. They don't understand how credit works. They don't understand how wealth works. Robert Kiyosaki, rich dad, poor dad, everybody is out there trying to work as hard as they can. Work your fingers to the bone to accumulate money. Do not accumulate money. Get access to credit. If you want to be wealthy in America, you have to have access to credit. Nobody gets wealthy making money anymore i cannot be clearer about this nobody makes money working anymore you'll make just enough to get by you have to have access to credit you don't have enough years in your life to save up to buy a house outright you have to have credit you have to be able to get a mortgage you have to, and then once you have the, you know what the difference between credit, you know what the difference between debt and leverage is, David? Uh, yeah, you can monetize leverage. That's right. It's whether or not it's a net negative or net positive. Now, that's dumbing it down. That's yeah, way yeah, yeah. dumbing it down. That that's might be the name of the here. podcast, Dumbing It Down. Dumbing It Down. Dumbing It Down. You might have just found it. I love it. Um, but if you take out an asset, that's credit. If that asset makes you money, it's leverage. Right, So if I take out $10,000, but it makes me $15,000, theoretically speaking, I can take out 100000 and it'll make me one fifty. I can take out a million, and it'll make me one point five. I was never my money to begin with, but I'm wealthy now. Right, The government works off of debt. How many trillions of dollars in debt are we? What is our deficit? I don't even know, dude. What is our deficit? It's a death spiral. Yeah. Never get out of it. Who do we owe exactly? The World Bank. Honestly, Who we owe... Who the hell is the World Bank? Us and Saudi Arabia, mostly. We owe ourselves. How does that work? Oh, it's a beautiful scam. I don't get that it. How do I... Here. Would take a whole nother episode. Just forget about it. That's what I would say if I would myself. Take a whole nother episode. Yeah, it's, it's a scam. It's a 100% scam. The Fed Reserve, fractional reserve banking, scam. Scam, scam, scam. They sell us our money. See, this is where I continue scrolling on my phone. I'm like, ah, this is scary, and I don't like it. Uh, okay, Show so how, so else. there we go. How, how do I how do I get people like you to listen? Because what we need to do is we need to opt out. If we went on a debt strike, if our citizens went on a debt strike before the Civil War started, before they, they before they got us to fight each other, we just said, all right, well, let me try this first. Republicans, Democrats, liberals, conservatives, all of us, all of us, white, black, gay, straight, we are being screwed. By the globalists. Yeah. We are being screwed by the global elites who are taking over our country. We are paying out the ass for a lower quality of life. There is nothing in America right now today that we are not paying more for than we were two years ago and are getting less out of. Not a single thing. We are getting a raw deal on every single thing that we are purchasing right now today. There's not a single thing. Not gas, not air travel, not internet service. They're restrict. You know, you you have unlimited data. Oh yeah, yeah, read read the fine print for the first ten gigs. After that, we restrict you down. Blah blah blah. It's bullshit. Yeah. The consumer is getting screwed. We should opt out. Learn from Donald Trump. Everybody wants to talk about his six bankruptcies. You get a bad deal. You know what the biggest tool you've got in your box is? Stop paying. Stop paying. They would they would never let us know though that everyone stopped paying. Like they would stop us from uniting. We stop paying your credit card bills, and they would all have to happen at the same time. Because if one person does it, they weaponize their IRS and they shove it up your ass. But if a million people do it, 
Look at 2008. It doesn't take much, man. These people are so greedy. They're so greedy. They've got this system, right? And we're going to talk to a pilot at the end of this podcast that's going to talk to you about how greedy the air the airlines are. How they have the airlines maxed to capacity. Excuse me. Excuse what the me. fuck are you doing right now? Excuse me. My phone's connected to the thing. We'll cut that out. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> They're so greedy. We're going to talk to an airline, and we're going to talk to an airline pilot at the end of this episode that's going to tell you how greedy the air industry is, how they have maxed out every single cent they can possibly make, how they took $7 billion of taxpayer money and fired 30,000 employees, and that's why your, your flight is delayed for 12 hours, because fuck you, that's why. Your flight's delayed 12 hours because they don't give a shit. They've already got your money, right? Your customer service is worse than ever because they don't give a shit. They've already got your money. Do you know DC is laughing at us? They took two years off, gave themselves a raise, and now they're going to tax you more than ever. And they're going to call it the Inflation Recovery Act on top of it. They hate you. They hate you. They think you are the biggest moron in the world. You say, hey, are we in a recession? And they roll their eyes like you're a child, and they redefine what recession means right in front of you. They hate you. They have no respect for you. They know you're not going to do a thing. The only people that organize and march work for them. You have no options. The food that you eat is gonna go up through the roof. Don't like it, starve. Don't like the prices, don't eat the food. We got cricket powder. They hate you. They're not working for you. And you have two options. And the nonviolent option is the debt strike. Where a million people get together and say, no, enough is he fucking enough. I am not paying my mortgage. I don't care if you cancel student loans. I'm not paying them. I'm not paying my credit cards. Now, if 10 people do it, if 20 people do it, if 200 people do it, the 90,000 IRS agents will fucking ruin their lives. So nobody's going to be the first person to do it. But if we want to save this country, if we want to save our future, and I, as dramatic as it sounds, if we want to save Western civilization, if we think it's worth preserving, this is how you do it. A million of us get together, and we just stop paying. You say, all right, nope, not paying anymore. I'm out. I opt out. I opt out of the corruption. I opt out of the greed. I opt out of this system that is making me pay with the hours of my life For my own repression. I'm out. And it wouldn't take much. It would take 100,000 people to start. Hurricane Katrina. These greedy assholes were leveraged so far. They were leveraged so far. It took a mortgage, a mortgage crisis interacting with, you know, a life insurance crisis. And that was a domino. Next thing you know, economy's in shambles. Big bailouts everywhere. Cars need to be bailed out. They're so intertwined. They're so greedy. These big banks are so interbred with one another. These government organizations, these corporations, what BlackRock is doing with these hedge funds, people's retirements, they're gambling on them. They're using ESG. They're losing a ton of money to try to social engineer the, the planet. It's insanity. Opt out. Hashtag world... Uh Debt strike. Debt strike. Hashtag world debt strike. Stop paying your debts. Renegotiate. Make them come back to the table. This is what unions should be doing. Yeah. This is what churches, church groups should be doing. This is what the people need to understand. This is where you hit them in their wallet. And their wallet is debt. If you take away, they have us all living on a subscription service already. We already own nothing, and we are not happy. 
It's true. This is how you do it. And if you don't do it, your younger generations don't stand a chance. Don't stand a chance. My generation might be the last generation that will be able to afford to own a home. David, your generation might legitimately be the last generation to know what a middle class is. The middle class is under attack. Yeah. They're gone. This Inflation Recovery Act was designed specifically to destroy the middle class. And it's freaking infuriating that they say, we're not going to go after anybody making less than $400,000. Okay, sure. Sure. Mm -hmm. It's an attack on small businesses. It's an attack on mom and pop shops. It gives corporations an access to billions of dollars in a war chest. All the money goes to the top. All the money goes to the bottom to support the top against the middle. The middle class is under attack. And the only chance they have is a debt strike. Because if people won't even not pay their debts, then they're definitely not going to storm the castle. <laughs> so yeah. I'm telling you. And I, I you know, I wish I wish I had the organizational skills to do it. I wish I, I was the man. I oh, wish I was the hashtag. one. I don't know if it takes a hashtag, bro. It, it takes a lot more than that. It takes, like, Maxine Waters and the Democrats, you got to give them a ton of, of credit. The, 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 the Democratic Socialists, the far-left Bernie Sanders people, they get together, they pool their money, and, uh, hey, march for us. And if you get arrested, we're going to pay your bail. They've got the war chests. Right. We're going to pay your bail. You know, we're going to – if you go to battle for us – We'll help you out. Hell, they even pay their protesters. People think all these protesters are organic, which is hilarious to me. These people are making $15 an hour to protest. Where's that money coming from? You know, the, you know, maybe, maybe that's what we need. We need a rich benefactor, but I don't see a rich benefactor being part of the, <laughs> being part of the, hey, the rich are evil. This is how we beat them move it, movement, you know? So, you know, again, the debt strike would do it, guys. The debt strike would change the world. The debt strike would put the ball back in our court, and nobody would have to get hurt. Nobody would, they, they, nobody would have to sacrifice their life. You would cripple these corrupt systems. You would cripple these corrupt organizations just by keeping your credit card in your wallet for six months. Cripple them. Cripple it. It would all crumble to the ground. And then they'd have to beg us. Because it's our money. At the end of the day, it's our money. It's the And the money, David, is the hours of our lives. The hours of our lives. Yeah.